Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and I'm back again with another really interesting coding interview question video. Today guys, we are going to solve question number 95, Unique Binary Search Trees Part 2. Uh, before I start with the video guys, just want to request you that if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon for future notifications of more such programming and coding related videos. Let's get started now. So basically guys, uh, this problem is actually similar to Unique Bani Search Trees Part 1 problem. Uh, in that problem, we were actually returning the number of Unique Bani Search Trees which can be created if we are given n nodes of unique values from 1 to n. But in this case, we are not returning the number of unique uh, BSTs. We actually have to return all the binary search trees. We actually have to return a list. Uh, a list of lists in which uh, all the values are actually the traversal of the tree in such a way that the first node is always the root node. So in this case, you can see in this example, the first node is the root node, which is one. Then we have got the left subtree and then we are printing the right subtree. So both the left subtree and the right subtree is sort of the in order traversal. In order traversal means first you print the left tree, then the right tree, sorry, the post order traversal in which you print the left node, then you print the right node, then you print the root, uh, root node. Uh, but uh, except that case, the first node is always going to be in this list as the root node. Okay. But uh, despite of that, they are stating that you can return the answer in any order. Okay. Now, there are various examples here and the constraints are also pretty straightforward that the value of n is going to range from 1 to 8. Okay. So, now let's get started with the solution part. But first, let's understand what's actually going on here. So, let's say guys, our n value is equals to 3. Right. Now, if n values is equals to 3, then obviously there are going to be 3 root nodes which can be possible here. There could be the root node 1, there could be the root node 2 or there could be the root node 3. So, let's say I say that the root node is going to be 1. So, if 1 becomes the root node, then we have to find out in how many ways we can actually, uh, you know, combine the rest of the nodes to form the left subtree and the right subtree. In how many ways can we arrange? So we know that if 1 is the root node, then the nodes which are left are 2 and 3. So first we are going to put 2 and 3 in certain order. Now we know that 2 can only be uh, coming at the right of the node 1. Because both the nodes are bigger than 1, they can only be arranged in the right tree. So then what we do, that we know that the only left tree, left value of for when is going to be null. Now we are only left with the arrangements of the right subtree. So one arrangement could be when 2 is the right node and 3 becomes the right node. One arrangement could be when 3 is the right node and 2 becomes its left node. So, in this case, one arrangement is 3, 2 and one arrangement is 2, 3. Obviously, I am not mentioning the uh, left and right null nodes here. But this is going to be it, right? One is going to be 3, 2 and one is going to be 2, 3. Something like this. So, this is the same way which we are, with which we are going to solve this problem, guys. What we are going to do is we are going to create a for loop, okay? In this for loop, we are going to take our root node. So, this is our root node. Then we are going to find out the left subtree of that root node. For the left subtree, let's say if here root node is equals to 1. So, i value becomes equals to 1. So, the left subtree is going to be from i minus 1 to the original value. So, let's say obviously uh, our nodes are starting from 1. So, there is nothing less than 1 here. So, if I say from 0 to i minus 1, obviously the value is going to be null because there is no node which is less than 1 for us. But this is how the left subtree is going to be created. But then for the right subtree, we are going to find out the arrangements from i plus 1 to the rightmost element. That means the n value and n value for us is 3. 
and finally when we have got all the right subtree combinations and we have got all the left subtree combinations then we are going to start combining them with the root node so for example we have got these two right subtree combination 3 comma 2 and 2 comma 3 so with these two combination we will combine them with this root node and we will eventually end up with two values of the same root node 1 we will append that in this huge big list and then we will continue to do this finally our list will get completed okay so this was a rough idea about how this is going to go guys let's start implementing this into code and it will be much more clear to us so i'm just going to cut this part and i'm going to paste it above so that we can refer it later now we have got this function called as generate trees right we know it is only taking one n element right but we don't actually need this function we need a function which can take which can create the values from the range so which can take the starting of the range and the ending of the range to find out the left subtree and the right subtree right so we are going to find out uh, we are going to create another overloaded function called as generate trees in which we will say that this is the starting of my uh, left element and this is the starting of my uh, end, ending of my tree so l is the starting of my tree and r is the ending of my tree this is the smallest element and r is the uh, biggest element and this is going to return me a list of trees list of combinations between this range l to r so let's say if L was 2 and R was 3. So it is going to give us all the combinations of 2 and 3. Now, first of all we have to check if L should always be great, uh, smaller than R. If L is greater than R or if L is equals to R, it basically means that we are at the end of the tree. So if L and R are both equal, it means we are at the leaf node. And, or if L is uh, greater than R, it means there is no leaf node also we are basically at null so if l is equals to r we should check and create a node so tree node node becomes equals to, sorry tree node node becomes equals to new tree node assign the value any value l or r because both are equal and then when this function is going to be called i am going to actually create a empty list list nodes because eventually it's, a, it's going to be a recursive function and finally whenever this function is going to return us the main list is going to have all the elements so list nodes becomes equals to new array list and this list node is going to add this node and if l is not equals to r it is going to simply add null here and after this if is completed we are just going to return the list nodes as a list so this is my recursive function and this becomes my base condition so this is my base condition which is done if you are at the list node sorry leaf node or if you are at the at a null node if this is not the case let's say if l is actually smaller than r so for integer i equals to, l to i less than r i plus plus so if l is smaller than r then what we are going to do if if l is smaller than equal to r then we are going to find out the arrangements for the left subtree we are going to find out the arrangements for right subtree and finally combine them together for the root node here we will assume that i is my root node right so so we have got a range from l to r so in this case let's say my l is 0 uh, l is 1 and my r is 3 so because 1 is the smallest number and 3 is the biggest number so i have to give every node a chance to become root node so that's why this is that for loop in which i am giving every node from the range l to r to become a root node so that's why the i is ranging from l to i equals to r if uh, i becomes the root node then we are going we have to find out the right subtree of i and the left subtree of i so we are going to create a list 
of three nodes which is called as L list. This L list is, is going to be all the left subtrees of node I. So to find out all the left subtrees of node I, I'm going to call the generate trees function again. But in this case, L is going to be as it is, but R is going to be I minus one. Because all the left subtrees of I are going to have value from L to I, I minus one. Now for the root node I, I'm also going to find out all the combinations of right subtrees. So for right subtrees, all the values are going to range from I plus one to R. So now I have got a list of all the right subtrees as well. Now all that is left is take all these left subtrees, take all these right subtrees, take the root node of these left subtrees and right subtrees and combine them with the current root node which is going to be I. So for all the left subtrees, tree node left, L list, sorry L list, and for all the right subtrees, G node right R list, we are going to find out G node root. So root node is our ith node. So new G node and then assign the value i to it. Now for the ith node, the left subtree becomes equals to the left and the right subtree becomes equals to the right. And when you have created this uh, root node, you simply add it to the list nodes dot add root. Finally, when this whole for loop is going to get completed, we return list nodes. Okay. So this is how uh, we eventually will continue on creating these lists and adding them in our, uh, in our array list. Finally, in this main function, return generate trees, call the recursive function, but in this case, left is going to be 1 and the right is going to be n. That is our, that is our range here, L to R. Okay. So, let's run this code. Let's see. Okay. So, you can see now that it is accepted here and I'm just going to submit it. To make sure that it actually gets submitted okay and there you go you can see that it is submitted as well okay now talking about the time complexity so actually the complexity for this particular problem is a bit too complex uh, but we will try to dissect it a bit now let's see in this function the first complex function is this uh, for loop function right now if you see this for loop function it is running from l to r obviously l is going to be 1 in our case and r is going to be n so it is going to be the sum of n natural numbers that is going to be n into n minus 1 divided by 2 correct now inside this for loop we are calling a recursive function which is l to i minus 1 and i plus 1 to r which is basically nothing but calling a recursive function for every single branch right so because we have got two branches for n nodes for every n every node there is going to be two branches right so for every uh, node it is going to get called two times that's why it will actually become equals to 2 to the power n okay uh, which is actually number of branches to the power n. Now this becomes our time complexity, but this is not just it. After this, we also see that there is a for loop in which we are running from left node and right node and combining all of them to actually create a whole root node because this is a double for loop. So its complexity will be n square. So n to the power two, right? So if we simply multiply all these things together, finally our answer would be somehow exponential because 2 to the power n is actually the biggest, uh, uh, you know, value here. So it is going to be an exponential uh, complexity, which will be somewhere around n into 2 to the power n. Okay. 
So that was the video guys and I hope it is now clear to you. If you did learn something from it then please uh, do like and share this video with your friends. Uh, please do subscribe to my channel guys and hit the bell icon for future notifications of more such programming and coding related videos. And uh, thank you so much for watching guys. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions or feedback, please write down in the comment section below. would be very happy to address it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care and bye-bye.